In this lecture, I'm going to be talking about another approach for name entity recognition. And we use few shot learning for that. Because we have data scarcity, we have limited data. So from very few shots, very few examples, we should be able to learn the name entities. So I'm going to be focusing on this article 2018. For many natural language processing tasks, the amount of annotated data is limited. This urges a need to apply semi-supervised learning techniques such as transfer learning or meta-learning. And in this work, they tackle name entity recognition tasks using prototypical network, a metric learning technique. It learns intermediate representations of forward which cluster well into name entity classes. This property of the model allows classifying words with extremely limited number of training examples and can potentially be used as a zero-shot learning method. By coupling this technique with transfer learning, they achieve well-performing classifiers trained on only 20 instances of a target class. So until now, it's everything is everything is standard because they are just using an average of those representations to get the prototype, and even their training is is very standard. But here they are talking about adaptation to NER, about sequential versus independent objects. Image dataset contains separate images that are not related to each other. In contrast, in NLP tasks, we often need to classify words which are grouped in sequences. Words in sequence influence each other, and when labeling a word, it, it, it's talking about that if you are using CRF conditional random fill, for example, it's a structured prediction, we have more information than just working on that individually. In domain and out of domain training. In the original paper of ProtonNet, so they apply it to zero-shot learning, weights of the model are updated during training phase, but once training is over, instances from test classes are only used for classification of prototypes. And given it is usually easy to obtain few label examples, they modify original zero-shot setting to few-shot setting and they use a small number of available labeled examples of the target class during training phase. And they denote this data as in-domain training data and data from other classes that is referred to as out-of-domain training. Here, domains in the traditional NLP sense are the same. Texts come from the same sources and word distributions are similar. Here, we refer to discrepancy between sets of name entity classes that they use. So while common classes are usually identified correctly by existing method, we target particularly at rare classes for which we have only a very limited number of labeled examples, and to increase the quality of their identification, we use uh, the information from other classes. Therefore, we train a separate model for every class in order to see the performance on each of them in isolation. And so the in-domain dataset is, is very small and contains labels only for class C. In order to train a realistic model, we need to keep the frequency of C in our in-domain training data similar to the frequency of this class in the general distribution. So if instances of this class occur on average in one of three sentences, then our in-domain training data has to contain sentences with no instances of class C, and their number should be twice as large as the number of sentences with C. Here they use RNA condition with conditional random field model because this is their base model. So they use words are mapped using pre-trained such as GLOVE model, such as GLOVE, and then they use additional character embedding as well. 
and here they just put it to the LSTM and finally they use the logits are, are, are used as input to a CRF and it outputs the distribution of tags for every word so you know protonet so the model is that as I said we have supports it and word we classify we, we we create the prototypes by just averaging simple averaging in contrast to other articles that use attention but we compute distances and after that this is the significance of this paper they use crf uh, and the distances computed for the next words are sources of information for conditional random fields also the distances computed from the previous words and finally they achieve these probabilities <clears throat> so they perform experiments with a number of different models and their base is rnn and then baseline prototype base prototype different configuration regularized protonet transfer learning baseline because they test a common transfer learning model use of knowledge about out of domain to layer to label in domain samples they call it warm base and for warm proto the same thing but they use protonet as well or the same thing for crf and uh, zero shot train these are performance of model train on 10 and 20 sentences so we have different class name uh, for, for but for test classes we have many different uh, classes so for each of these configuration base base proto warm proto warm base warm proto we have different as you see this one is bigger in con contrast to previous uh, scores f1 scores